Welcome to this Houdini Notebook tutorial. This video is part of the Lighting Notebook, and the node that we're looking at today is the Light Linker. Again, this is going to be a lab level node, so we can go over here to the Solaris desktop, go over to the stage level, and over here I just have a very basic scene. This is the same scene that I've shown you before. We just have a bunch of lights over on the side, and we have this small scene which is just made up of a few pieces of geometry built in a SOP create. You will see that I have added name tags to all of the pieces of geometry, for example, the floor, background, a tube platform, so on. And that's just because I need these names over here in our scene graph tree, right? So adding that name attribute simply gives us names to work with in our scene graph tree and separates the geometry into its constituent parts. So we now have geometry and lights both being merged in over here. Now we're going to be using the light linker node. The light linker, unlike the other light nodes, can't simply go over here with the rest of your lights. That's because the light linker works on forming relationships between lights and geometry. And as you can see, we only have lights over here and no geometry. So what we have to do is put it in after we've merged our geometry and our lights together, just like this. So now the light mixer has access to our geometry on the right and our lights on the left. So what exactly does this do? Well, it allows us to define which contributions from our lights are being applied to which objects. So let's go ahead and take a look at our rim light. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this rim light a different color. So let's just make it red so that we can see exactly where it is. Now you will see that this light is casting quite a bit of light on the floor and we don't necessarily want that, right? Perhaps we only want it hitting the edges of our objects over here and not influencing the floor at all. What we can do is drag over our rim light over here and you'll see that it now gives us these two options. We can choose which objects should be receiving light from this. If I go over here and just drag over the sphere, you'll see that now only the sphere receives light. We can also add other objects over here. So once again, our two platform and our two platforms over here. Now you'll see that there's no light on the floor. The only light that it's getting is the bounce light that's coming off of these objects. And so that's how we go about linking a particular light to pieces of geometry. Now you can also define which objects should receive shadows. If we take a look over here, we have these shadows being cast on the floor. And perhaps we don't want that, right? And now I know that that is being cast by our full light top over here. If I set this to some blue color, just like that, you'll be able to see more or less what's causing the shadow. So if we go over to our light linker over here and grab the full top and drag it into the middle, you may think to drag the floor over here. And that doesn't actually work because what we're doing here, this isn't related to shadow. If you look at the top right, you'll see that it says light. All this is doing is it's excluding this from being affected by the light source, right? So instead of not receiving shadows, it's not receiving any light at all. So this at the top is for inclusion and this is for exclusion. So we can just clear that and restart this render. If we want to do shadow linking, it is currently not supported in XPU. If you take a look at the documents over here, you will see that shadow linking is currently only available for Karma CPU. So we can switch to CPU over here and let's test out the shadow linking. So if we switch this to shadow, you'll see that these two icons change and we can actually tell it what should be excluded from casting shadows. For example, we can take this tube platform over here and tell it that we don't want it casting shadows. You'll see that it now no longer casts shadows on the floor. So instead of telling the floor to not receive shadows, we're telling the tube to not cast shadows. And if we wanted, we could do the same for these other two. So the two rectangles over here, just exclude them as well. So that'll remove the shadow over here. And perhaps it looks weird, but perhaps that's what you want. So that's how you would go about doing it. So we have two separate ones over here. We have a light option and a shadow option. Each comes with inclusion and exclusion. When we're talking about inclusion and exclusion for lights, we're saying which objects should receive light, which objects should not receive light. And when it comes to shadows, we're saying which objects should cast shadows and which objects should not cast shadows. So I hope that this helped you understand the light linker node. It's really useful for cleaning up scenes where you have a particular light that's perhaps doing a single function in your scene and you don't want it influencing the rest of the lighting in your scene. For example, this room light is a good example where you don't necessarily want this light being cast on the floor, you only want it hitting particular objects. Perhaps you only want this to focus on a particular object. You can once again remove objects from it by clicking over here, this will bring it up, and you can either add or remove objects as you see fit. So that's all for this video. I'll be seeing you in the next video very soon. Thanks for watching. I'll see you then. Bye.